Deep in the hills of Rwanda's Nyungwe forest, you'll find Michel Massazera. The environmentalist has made it his mission to get this forest thriving. He grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but returned to Rwanda in the 1990s after the civil war. I came here after the genocide. So when I came here, I was trying to find a meaningful way I can help my country because I grew up in exile. I was trying to find a purpose of being a Rwandan in this country. The process of turning the forest into a national park was fraught with challenges. When I started, we closed 5,000 miners in the park with different settlements. Today, the forest is empty of miners. Masuzera led a comprehensive study of biodiversity in the park, which covers an area of 1,000 square kilometers. It's the largest protected mountain rainforest in Africa. The park is home to over a thousand different species, including Angolan colobus monkeys. There are 700 of these primates here, the world's largest population. So here we are at uh, Winka, this is uh, a reception center. And, uh, Mesozera spent two decades turning Nyungwe into a national park. Even while he studied for his doctorate in natural resources and conservation at the University of Vermont, he still kept an eye on the park. He's also set up the first canopy walk in Africa. Growing the park through ecotourism was always his goal. Ecotourism is becoming the major source of earning. The country generating more money. At least for a year, the country generating more than $15 million, considering all the national parks. That is just direct entrance fees. But it's not only about protecting biodiversity. As for us, an organize, conservation organization, we are not doing conservation for the sake of conservation, or for only for protecting animals. It's for conservation for community benefits. The US-based World Conservation Society is a major supporter of the park. As its country director for Rwanda, Masuzera initiated beekeeping cooperatives to create alternative livelihoods. Illegal beekeeping caused a devastating forest fire 20 years ago, so the cooperatives have focused on safe and profitable methods for producing honey. New York will stay there forever as long as you conserve it, you protect it well. And as long as you conserve it well, those benefits I mentioned will stay there for now and for generations to come. From the small worker ants to the large surrounding communities, every part of this rainforest remains a precious gift for Michel Massuzera to share with the world. Our oceans are precious. They are home to a beautiful coral, amazing whales and rays and the fish we eat. But did you know that 9 million tons of plastic are dumped in the world's oceans every year? By 2050, there might be more plastic than fish in them. That's insane. So two ocean lovers got together and invented a tool called Seabin, which can help to clean up the ocean. This is the latest video in our series, Doing Your Bit. Every year, we dump more than 8 million tons of plastic trash into the world's oceans. Small harbors like this one are good places to test a new cleanup device. On the Spanish island of Mallorca, Andrew Turton and Peter Siglinski are trying out their floating rubbish collector, the sea bin. Here's how it works. An external pump creates a vacuum that sucks in water along with the floating trash. The filter bag inside the bin even removes oil and detergents from the water. The designers say it doesn't harm fish because only objects at the surface are pulled into the bin. At present, the pump is still being powered by gasoline. But in the future, Andrew and Peter plan to use renewable energy sources, like wind and solar, to run their ocean cleanup device. Do you 
like that. If you are also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories. The Balkan lynx is one of the rarest big cats in the world. A species is critically endangered. Some of the lynx live in Kosovo where efforts to protect its wildlife are still in their infancy. But against all odds, a conservation NGO at a non-governmental organization is working to protect the shy and beautiful creatures. And their goal is to set up a cross-border protected area where the wild cats can breed and multiply. But there is still a long way to go. They started by setting up camera traps to try to figure out how many lynx there are. Our reporter joined them in the forests of Kosovo and take a look at what he found out. The Balkan lynx is a master of disguise and pads through the forest silently, often unnoticed. It's one of the rarest species of big cat in the world, and it's in great danger of extinction. Azim Ramadani wants to protect the lynx, though he's never seen one in the wild. He's a photographer, but now he runs an NGO called Finch, an organization for protecting wild birds and other animals in Kosovo. And he's working in the Shar Mountains with the International Balkan Lynx Recovery Program. The researchers installed a camera trap to gain more information about this rare species. They head for Prizren, Kosovo's second city, to study the results. Lynxes prey on just a few species, including deer and chamois. But their numbers are declining fast, because of environmental degradation and hunting. That, in turn, puts the lynx's life in danger. But the photos do show animals the big cats would be happy to eat. So perhaps they'll soon catch a glimpse of the lynx, too. Colleagues in Macedonia have been working with the rare felines since 2006. Dime Malovsky has fitted some with transmitters, so the researchers can track their movements via GPS. That's the idea, to make, uh, to make suitable habitats for, for new links to, to, uh, to conquer new territories, you know, and to expand. And not only north towards Kosovo and Montenegro, but also south towards Greece, because Greece also offers a lot of suitable habitats. But settling lynxes in new places requires the help of local people in conserving nature. Ramadani and his colleagues visit schools to talk to the children. Their enthusiasm for the beautiful animals is evidently contagious. They're working on a new brochure for school students and a lynx quiz written by the team in Macedonia. The teaching materials have proven effective there. Now they're being translated for distribution in Kosovo. The small country is one of the poorest in Europe. Many people in the countryside depend directly on what they find in nature to survive. They also leave a lot of trash in the wild. They dump it illegally, even in the remotest areas. A lot is washed away and dispersed along the many streams, even in conservation areas like Shar National Park. Illegal logging is also a big problem. People fell trees for heating and cooking. And as more of the forest is destroyed, the lynx's habitat shrinks. Kosovo has natural treasures in abundance that are becoming rare elsewhere, such as the cowslip. Its flowers and roots are much in demand for medicinal purposes. Cowslips are a source of income for Sherabane Blakai and her family. She and other gatherers have learned how to harvest the valuable plants sustainably so that the stocks will not decline. The German Government Development Aid Agency, GIZ, helped develop the gathering and distribution system. Sherabane Blakai brings the plants she's gathered to her village collection point, one of 53 across the country. The lynx's habitat will only be preserved if local people find new sustainable sources of income like this one, 
and no longer have to degrade the forest. As awareness grows of the importance of preserving the environment, future generations will also be able to enjoy the natural beauty of Kosovo.